This was my perfect checklist. Get good grades? Check. Be in the school cabinet? Check. Shortlist colleges for my future? Check. Become an astronaut? The only milestone that remained unchecked. So I'm architect Arshleen Kaur, a space architect by profession, and I build houses for a living. Back in those days, in my eighth grade, if you would have came to me and asked me what do I want to do or what do I want to become, my answer would always have been an astronaut. Like most of you, we had really less choices back then. We just knew some occupations. One was doctor, one was a teacher, and then astronaut. And many of us right here, I guess, wanted to become an astronaut. So that was me. But I got a reality check really soon, and that too by my mother. She made me sit one day, and she went like, you cannot go up there. And then there was me, being really naive. I said, why cannot I? Then she literally explained it to me. You not only have bronchitis, but even allergies. So, but obviously you cannot go to the space and you cannot become an astronaut. So that day was really devastating for me. I really didn't know what to do, where should I start from. I was clueless about everything. But somehow, my father came into picture and he introduced me to the world of space architecture to the world of architecture. So at first I was feeling pretty vague that what is even this thing? They just make buildings and construct stuff. So why do I want to do that? I don't want to do. Then he explained me the impossibilities that can be achieved through architecture. So I made it clear to myself that I can be the one, I can design habitats for humans. Like I'll be designing something and the future mankind would live in there. So why not? Okay. At least at that point of time, it was better rather than getting married after my 12th grade. So that was my only option. <laughs> but somehow I paved my way into space architecture because of the never ending love for space that I had. So I'm standing right here as a space architect in front of all of you. But coming back to my routine, that was like almost all of you and it's something that you guys even do or prefer in your vacations. I used to wake up at 6, then I used to dress up, head straight to the gym and come back, have my protein rich diet and then there was my alarm which struck and I used to wake up in reality. <laughs> and I guess most of us were the same in that case. But what actually changed? So obviously there is a change that makes me stand here in front of all of you today. So what changed? One day I was scrolling through my Instagram and I was just looking at the reels like all of us do. So I, there was a post that came. It was by V NASA, that is NASA India. So that post was on space architecture. And that was my first time where I saw those two words, space and architecture together. So it made me wonder that even if that thing exists, like how is that possible? These two words are contrasting and it cannot. But it somehow did and somehow I got into it. Before I break down the actual concept of space architecture to all of you, I would like to introduce and I would like all of you to just come and just see my journey with me. What have I done? So it was a full on roller coaster ride, full of ups and downs. And there were many challenges. Again, there was one challenge that I feel all of you must have faced at some point of time in your life. Because me being a 22 year old, have faced it and that's FOMO. That is the fear of missing out. Our generation is surely pretentious a lot. Like we know what to behave, how to behave in front of people, what to do and how to pretend. But there's this one thing that I bet all of us face, but usually do not speak about. So there was this time I remember when I was in my college, I took early joining. So I had to go to the office in my final year. I used to sit from nine to five, do my office chores. Then I used to come home, work on my thesis. Then even as I was living in a PGI, I used to work for there to like do my clothes and laundry, make my food and everything. So that was my routine in my final year. 
Then there were my friends who used to go out, party, enjoy, then go on vacations or trips together. And then there was me sitting on the corner in a different state that was Ahmedabad and work. So at that time I realized how hard hitting Bollywood lines can be. Which one that struck me was kuch paane ke liye kuch khona padta hai. And it made me realize ki haan, shayad sahi mein. And for those of you who have seen Loki, it really made me wonder I had all my variants in this particular timeline <laughs> working together to achieve all of it. So I was that person with that particular mindset wherein I wanted to do everything that I could. Even if I couldn't do something, I just wanted to anyhow have that on my plate, achieve it. And with that, I came up with DIT. That is do it all. I changed my FOMO into DIT. I changed my mentality. And why did I do so? I came up with kuch paane ke liye thoda extra mile to chalna hi padta hai. With a proper time management, proper focus, I came up with do it all. And I somehow managed to literally do it all. That's why I'm standing here today. Now we'll talk of... Thank you. We'll talk of one particular thing that I know all the boys out there want from their girlfriends but usually hesitate to say. Any guesses? Space. Yes, that's space. But I know some of you were not thinking it to be space if this wouldn't have been shown. So, yes, now we'll talk about space. Space is something which is something uh, beyond Earth, which is... Uh, whenever we see a story or a post on Insta, we just rush to post it on our stories because that's the amount of excitement that it gets in all of us. And space, it is, if I talk about space, being a space architect, the question is, why do we even need space architects when engineers can do all the work and they have been doing it till now? So what is even the role of my existence? Coming to that, imagine you're here. Just imagine. This is actually a room. You have wires all around you. You do not know which is the floor, which is the ceiling and which is the walls. You have no clue about that and you are freely floating in here. How would you feel? Next, we'll even see another example about the ISS. Imagine you being on the ISS, that is the International Space Station. This is actually space architecture because there is a number of six crew members who is on the ISS at all the times. So this is space architecture. Now imagine all of you, like just for once, like you are here and you are a part of that six crew member. You've just had a fight with a fellow crew member. What would you do? You cannot shut doors on them. That's not how space works, you're on a mission. What else can you do? That's exactly where space architecture comes into play. Space architecture is nothing but just an interdisciplinary between architecture and engineering. It's a mixture of both. And it is designing something beyond Earth, be it planetary, be it lunar, or be it orbital. And as I was a child, I was so fanatic for the space, and now I'm working in this field, it is just causing an adrenaline rush to me. My firm, uh, to, I had an urge to do something new, like there was a chill inside of me to just do something new. So I came up with, I co-found Ancient Technologies with my partner, wherein we work with cosmic architecture alongside space architecture. Now what is cosmic architecture? Cosmic architecture is a full-on new term which we have introduced. It is basically when we link the past from the future, it is uh, when architecture is uh, a mixture actually uh, with influence on semantics, sacred geometry, psychology, cosmology and even ancient sciences. So ancient sciences too has an influence on architecture till now. And as all of us know that cosmos has a language of its own and that's mathematics. Everything around here is just based on geometry and mathematics. It is already in the nature, be it the petals uh, or be it even the Garbhagrihas or the pyramidal structure above the temples, everything happens for a reason. Just similar to that, the universe even has an architecture of its own. And now I'll introduce you to one experiment wherein, what if I say that you all can see sound, like literally see it. Would you believe me? Now we'll do, uh, I'll play a video. You'll actually see sound for yourselves. 
and there would be some shoot sound though. Now what happened here was there were two different frequencies being played and in the first one if you might have seen there was a tortoise back like structure formed and when we change that frequency those lines change into horizontal lines. So we can literally see sound waves with the help of either sand or with the help of even water. In case any one of you might have JBL speakers, they literally promote it that way that you put, put a bit of water on that, there and it will splash up and a symmetrical design would form. This is semantics. Now we'll look at something way cooler, that's water. We drink water every day, water is around us, the earth is 70% water, we are 70% water. But what if I tell you that like us, we have consciousness, water too has consciousness and water has a memory of its own. It can literally relate to the words that you say. Look at this picture, this is nothing but water. Whenever you will say positive things in front of water, it will have symmetrical designs formed and wherein there would be negative things or negative word portraits, it would have distortions. Like you can see in the last two figures, it is polluted water before prayer and, pollu and that particular similar polluted water after prayer. This is the miracle that prayers or good words can do to water. And now imagine that you are having a glass of water in front of you, you say good words to it or even if a bhajan or anything is going, like we even have jal everywhere. So, and then you drink it. Just imagine what can it do to your head. It will make you stress free. It will have a positive impact on all of your brains. That is exactly what water is capable of doing. I truly believe that these are some, but there are many wonders of nature that would surely unveil at some point or the other. And with my constant urge to do something new, I'm surely there that I'll do something. Now, that was actually me in my eighth grade wherein I wanted to become an astronaut. And now if I look at myself that I'm an architect, I think that it was all worth it. And my, the architecture of my life has been cosmically derived somehow and it has been predestined already. I was meant to be in this field. I was meant to do something for this space and I am doing it some way or the other because life is never planned. But I'll come to some things that never change because habits usually do not change. So this is the checklist that came back to me. I am still that person who has everything planned on a piece of paper and I am literally that person who writes my daily course on a piece of paper. So I am that person. So become an architect, check. Become a space architect, check. Become an analog astronaut, check. To be awarded as a young achiever, check. Sometimes life has better plans for, for in store for us. And that was my journey from being a student like all of you to co-founder of ancient technologies. From FOMO to do it all. And that was architect Arshim Karsahani signing off. Thank you so much. <laughs>